place back down the road called Beekman's. Beekman's Diner. Anyhow, that's where I found that truck I have out there. There's a radio in the truck. I jumped in to listen to it. When a big gasoline truck came screaming right across the road. But there must have been 10, 15 of those things chasing after it. Grabbing and holding on. Now, I didn't see them at first. I could just see that the truck was moving in a funny way. And those things were catching up to it. The truck went right across the road. Slammed on my brakes to keep from hitting it myself. It went right through the guardrail. I guess... I guess the driver must have cut off the road into that gas station by Beekman's Diner. It went right through the billboard, ripped over a gas pump, and never stopped moving. By now, it's like a moving bonfire. Didn't know if the truck was going to explode or what. Still hear the man screaming. This thing is just backing away from it. I looked back at the diner to see if, if there was anyone there who could help me. That was when I noticed that the entire place had been encircled. There wasn't a sign of light left. Except by now there were no more screams. I realized that I was alone with 50 or 60 of those things just standing there staring at me. I, I started to drive. I just plowed right through them. They didn't move, they didn't run, or just stood there, staring at me. Just wanted to crush them. They scattered through the air like bugs. We were riding in the cemetery, Johnny and me. Johnny. We came to put a wreath on my father's grave. Johnny and, and he said, can I have some candy, Barbara? And we didn't have any. And, oh, it's hot in here. And he said, oh, it's late. Why did we start so late? And I said, Johnny, if you'd gotten up earlier, we wouldn't be late. Johnny asked me if I were afraid. And I said, I'm not afraid, Johnny. And then this man started walking up the road. He came slowly, and Johnny kept teasing me and saying, he's coming to get you, Barbara. And I laughed at him and said, Johnny, stop it. And then Johnny ran away. And I, I went up to this man, and I was going to apologize. Why don't you just keep calm? And I looked up at and I said, could he? And he grabbed me. He grabbed me. And he ripped at me. He held me and he ripped at my clothes. I think you should just calm down. Oh, oh I screamed, Johnny! Johnny, help me! Oh, help me! And he wouldn't let me go. He ripped. <laughs> and then Johnny came and he ran and he
Scott, we have to wait for Johnny. Maybe we better go out and get him. We have to go out and get Johnny. He's out there. Please, don't you hear me? We've got to go out and get him. Please! We have got to go get Johnny! Please help me! Please! Don't you know what's going on out there? This is no Sunday school picnic. Don't you understand? My brother is alone! Your brother is dead. No! My brother is not dead! Because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens, and because of the crisis which is even now developing, this radio station will remain on the air, day and night. This station and hundreds of other radio and TV stations throughout this part of the country are pooling their resources through an emergency network hookup to keep you informed of all developments. At this hour, we repeat, these are the facts as we know them. There is an epidemic of mass murder being committed by a virtual army of unidentified assassins. The murders are taking place in villages, cities, rural homes, and suburbs with no apparent pattern or reason for the slayings. It seems to be a sudden, general explosion of mass homicide. We have some descriptions of the assassins. Eyewitnesses say they are ordinary-looking people. Some say they appear to be in a kind of trance. Others describe them as being... So, at this point, there is no really authentic way for us to say who or what to look for and guard yourself against. Misshapen monsters. Reaction of law enforcement officials is one of complete bewilderment at this hour. So far, we have been unable to determine that any kind of organized investigation is yet underway. Police, sheriff deputies, and emergency ambulances are literally deluged with calls for help. The scene can best be described as mayhem. Mayors of Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Miami along with the governors of several eastern and midwestern states, have indicated the National Guard may be mobilized at any moment, but that has not happened as yet. The only advice our reporters have been able to get from official sources is for private citizens to stay in their homes behind locked doors. Do not venture outside for any reason until the nature of this crisis has been determined and until we can advise what course of action to take. Keep listening to radio and TV for any special instructions as this crisis develops further. Thousands of office and factory workers are being urged to stay at their places of employment, not to make any attempt to get to their homes. However, in spite of this urging and warning, streets and highways are packed with frantic people trying to reach their families or apparently to flee just anywhere. We repeat, the safest course of action at this time is simply to stay where you are. services in Washington, D.C., now tells us that the emergency presidential conference, which we've just mentioned, will include high-ranking scientists from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration.
their facilities in an emergency network to bring you this news as it develops. We urge you to stay tuned to radio and TV and to stay indoors at all costs. Late reports reaching this newsroom tell of frightened people seeking refuge in churches, schools, and government buildings, demanding shelter and protection from the wholesale murder, which apparently is engulfing much of the nation. Law enforcement officials are at a loss to explain all, even at this hour, even to theorize about the reasons for this wave of murder. So far, the only are able to give the public is so much Chief T.K. Dunmore of Camden, North Carolina, is quoted as saying, quote, tell the people for God's sake to get off the street. Tell them to go home and lock their doors and windows up tight. We don't know what kind of murder-happy characters we have here. And this is Chief Dunbar of Camden, North Carolina. So far, the only descriptions, the only clues anyone has of the killers come from frightened witnesses of some of the slaves. These eyewitness accounts very often describe the murderers as ordinary-looking people, misshapen monsters, people who look like they're in a trance, and things that look like people but act like animals. solid now. In nature. However, as these we ought to be all right here for a while. Dramatically, it was soon apparent that we have a gun and bullets, of food and the radio. An obscure kind of conspiracy. Sooner or later, someone as bound to come and get us out. Creatures from outer space. So again, we join with law enforcement agencies in urging you to seek shelter in a building. Lock the doors and windows securely. Hey, that's us. We're doing all right. Of any suspicious strangers. And keep tuned to your radio and television for survival instructions and further details of this continuing story. Look, I don't know if you're hearing me. Goes on in the absence of any but I'm going upstairs now. It's almost as though some critical balance of... If anything should try to break in here, I can hear it from up there. I'll be down to take care of it. Savage killer. We repeat this radio station... Everything is all right for now. I'll be back to reinforce the windows and doors later. But you'll be all right for now, okay? Okay. Civil defense officials in Cumberland have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. from witnesses to the effect that people who acted as though they were in a kind of trance were killing and eating their victims prompted authorities to examine the bodies of some of the victims. Medical authorities in Cumberland have concluded that in all cases, the killers are eating the flesh of the people they murdered. Repeating this latest bulletin just received moments ago from Cumberland, Maryland, civil defense authorities have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. Medical examination of victims' bodies shows conclusively that the killers are eating the flesh of the people they kill. And so this incredible story becomes 
more ghastly with each report. It's difficult to imagine such a thing actually happening, but these are the reports we have been receiving and passing on to you, reports which have been verified as completely as is possible in this confused situation. It is happening, and it would appear that no one is safe from this wave of mass... <laughs> We're from town. City. A radio. County, Pennsylvania. The Butler County Sheriff has verified that reports of murder being partially eaten by their slayers is true. No further details available at this time. However, my well, you guys been down there. I could use some help up here. That's the cellar. It's the safest place. You mean you didn't hear the racket we were making up here? How were we supposed to know what was going on? Because there have been those things for all we knew. That girl was screaming. Sure, you must know what a girl screaming sounds like. Those things don't make any noise. Anybody would know somebody if you needed help. Look, it's kind of hard to hear what's going on from down there. We thought we could hear screams, but for all we knew, that could have meant those things were in the house afterwards. And you wouldn't come up and help? Well, if there were more, the racket sounded like the place was being ripped apart. How were we supposed to know what was going on? Now, wait a minute. You just got finished saying you couldn't hear from down there. Now you say it's not like the place was being ripped apart. It would be nice if you get your story straight, man. All right, now you tell me. I'm not going to take that kind of a chance when we got a safe place. We luck into a safe place, and you're telling us we got to risk our lives just because somebody might need help, huh? Yeah, something like that. All right, why don't we settle this, oh, Mister? We came up, okay? We're here. Now I suggest we all go back downstairs before any of those things find out we're in here. They can't get in here. You got the whole place boarded up? Yeah, most of it. I'll be a few spots upstairs. They won't be hard to fix. You're insane. The cellar's the safest place. I'm telling you, they can't get in here. And I'm telling you, those things turned over our car. We were damn lucky to get away at all. Now you tell me those, those things can't get through this lousy pile of wood? His wife and kids downstairs. The kids heard them. Well, I still think we're better off up here. We could strengthen everything up, Mr. Cooper. With all of us working, we could fix this place up in no time. We have everything we need up here. We can take all that stuff downstairs with us. And you're really crazy, you know that? You got a million windows up here. All these windows, you're gonna you're gonna make them strong enough to keep these things out, huh? I told you those things don't have any strength. I smashed three of them and pushed another one out the door. Did you hear me when I told you they turned over our car? Oh, hell, any good five men could do that. That's my point. Only there's not going to be five or even ten. There's going to be twenty, thirty, maybe a hundred of those things. And as soon as they know we're here, this place is going to be crawling with them. Well, if they're that many, they'll probably get us wherever we are. <sighs> Look, the cellar. The cellar, there's only one door, right? Just one door, that's all we have to protect. Tom and I fix it so it locks and boards from the inside. But up here, all these windows, why, we'd never know where they were going to hit us next. You got a point, Mr. Cooper. But down in the cellar, there's no place to run to. I mean, if they did get in, there'd be no back exit. We'd be done for. Uh, we can get out of here if we have to. And we got windows to see what's going on outside. But down there, with no windows, if a rescue party did come, we wouldn't even know it. But the cellar is the strongest place. The cellar is a death trap. I don't know, Mr. Cooper. I think he's right. You know how many's out there? I don't know. Maybe, maybe six or seven. Look, you two can do whatever you like. I'm going back down to the cellar, and you better decide. Because I'm going to board up that door, and I'm not going to unlock it again, no matter what happens. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Cooper. No, I'm not going to wait. I've made my decision, now you make yours. Now, wait a minute. Let's think about this. We can make it to the cellar if we have to. And if we do decide to stay down there, we'll need some things from up here. So let's at least consider this a while. If you box yourself in the cellar and those things get in the house, you've had it. At least up here you have a fighting chance. Yeah, it looks like about eight or ten out there now. There's more than there were. There are a lot out back, too.
fix these boards. You're crazy. Those things are going to be in every window and door in this place. We've got to get down into the cellar. Go down in that damn cellar. Get out of here! I'm, I'm taking the girl with me. You leave her here. You keep your hands off her. And everything else that's up here, too. Because if I stay up here, I'm fighting for everything up here. And the radio and the food is part of what I'm fighting for. Now, if you're going down the cellar, get. The man's insane. He's insane. We've, we've got to have food down there. We've got a right. This is your house. We've got a right. You going down there with him? Well, I... Yes or no, this is your last chance. No beating around the bush. Well, listen, I got a kid down there. She, she can't possibly... I couldn't bring her up here. She can't possibly take all the racket and those, those things smashing through the windows. Well, you're her father. If you're stupid enough to go die in that trap, that's your business. However, I am not stupid enough to follow you. It is tough for the kid that her old man is so stupid. Now, you get the hell down in the cellar. You can be the boss down there. I'm boss up here. You bastards. You know, I won't open this door again. I mean it. Mr. Cooper, with your help, we can... With my help. Let him go, man. His mind is made up. Just let him go. Wait a minute. Judy, come on up here, honey. You're going to let them get hurt, too. 